Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week's video we are talking about a skin condition that both men and women deal with. Uh, more women than men, only about 10% of the male population are actually ever diagnosed with this type of skin condition. If you've seen it after you were pregnant, it's typically called the pregnancy mask, also known as melasma. So what is melasma? Melasma is the discoloration or dark blotchy spots on your face, um, either during hormonal changes, maybe some sun exposure, or if you use some type of chemical on your face that it just did not agree with, that could also cause some discoloration in your skin. Now typically you'll find it right here on your, your cheek area, your chin, maybe your upper lip, your nose, and around your forehead. Again, that's the cheek area, the chin, upper lip, nose, and the forehead area is typically where you see melasma. You might also know or notice rather some other dark blotches maybe around your neck area and sometimes discoloration on your arms. So we're not gonna be talking about ways to treat this. Um, if you think you may have melasma and you want it to be diagnosed, it's best to seek a dermatologist to get confirmation that that's what you're dealing with. However, any type of skin discoloration, um, there are ways that you can hide it uh, with makeup. The tricky part is, is that oftentimes what I do see is that women, and I'm guilty of it too, uh, we tend to try to use lighter uh, type of foundation or maybe concealer, hoping that it's going to mask it. Actually, that is the opposite of what you want to do. That actually highlights it even more. If you tried it before, you likely have noticed where you put it on the dark blotch and it looks really cakey and just kind of weird, but it's very bright. Um, you still see the dark discoloration underneath. So that is that is a no-no. Do not do that. There are better ways to cover up discoloration when it comes to your skin. Now, the reason why I know this is because I, too, suffer from melasma. And when I say suffer, I do mean suffer because boy, is it a pain in the butt, isn't it? So after my second pregnancy, that's when I noticed discoloration on my face. It was really prominent right here, right above my lip. I still have discoloration right here and right here on both sides of the cheeks. Little bit on my nose, not too bad. Um, but those are the main areas that I often have to uh, mask with makeup. So that way you, the viewer at home, uh, you're neither the wiser that I'm dealing with melasma, right? I, it's gone so bad that uh, I remember I've had a couple of viewers actually email my boss. I know this is crazy. Email my boss and, and said that I needed to wax my mustache. Oh, that's heartbreaking, isn't it? To hear somebody tell you that you have a mustache. You're like, no, actually I don't. I, I do wax my lip. Most women do. But I, I did have melasma. Um, and it was darker at that point um, because I was still pregnant. So for those of you who are dealing with melasma, we're going to focus on that today. And I'm going to give you some great tips on how to mask it, that pregnancy mask that nobody wants to see, right? And I'm actually going to show you. So let's get started. I'm today how to mask that discoloration, that nasty pregnancy mask that nobody wants to see with the help of some makeup. Now, I'm going to first remove my makeup. So here we go. You also have dark um, discoloration underneath your eyes. Not bags, but just discoloration. This will also help. So there you have it. All of that makeup taken off. Let me get in closer. If you could see, I do have a little melasma here. A little imperfection there. I have melasma all right here. 
and also on this side I have melasma as well. Little discoloration here and there on my chin and some on my nose. If you could see I have a couple of just random dark blotches and it is all due to melasma. It used to be a lot darker uh, since I have not uh, been pregnant. My goodness, my, my youngest is five. <laughs> it's such a long time. Um, it actually lightens up. It should. But the crucial thing is if you've ever suffered from melasma, do not go out in the sun. And if you do, please wear sunscreen. I usually wear a huge, huge hat when I go out to, to cover my whole face because any type of skin ex or sun exposure rather um, to your skin will increase the discoloration. So you may think, whew, I got it at bay. It's not as bad. But once that sun hits it, it could get much worse. So keep that in mind as the summer months do come up. Okay, so I'm completely bare. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my, I got my makeup kit right here. My mirror in front of me, face cream, my lotion before I put my makeup on. Make sure to hydrate. That is so crucial, especially as we age, ladies. You must hydrate. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. Now, I purchased this at Walgreens, so don't think you have to go to a high-end um, makeup store to, to find some good stuff. I do have a lot of makeup from, from Ulta and from Sephora. This one was from Walgreens. So what this is, is this is a color corrector. I have two of them, but I routinely use this one more than this one because this one is not as red. So um, I encourage you to seek out both and see which one works for you. I feel like this one is just a little too dark for me. So red, this type of color, is going to help mask the discoloration. So I'm just gonna put it on. I have discoloration right here, if you notice, my melasma. I'm gonna put it on around my kids think this is the funniest part of my makeup routine. I'm like, what is mom doing? I put some here, just a little bit. And then here, if I have maybe a breakout or two, I will also put it there. Okay. So I got that. Now I'm going to get my sponge. And these, just buy them at the drugstore. Same stuff. Maybe Walgreens, CVS. And what I'm doing here is I'm just patting it in. Patting it in because I don't want big, heavy blotches in any area. It's okay if you go a little bit further out. And I'm going to pat this in over here. And this is very crucial. What I'm doing right now is very crucial type of technique that I use for the rest of my face. Even when I put on my blush. and my contour. So there you have it. Okay, so I have it on. Now, I'm going to use, and this one I did buy from Ulta. So if you guys are wondering, I purchased all these. I am not sponsored by anyone, just so you know. Okay, here we go. This is what we're dealing with. You see that? All in the areas where I have melasma. Um, bye bye under eye full coverage. I actually use this as my concealer for all these areas. Just because if you think about it, your under eye, when it's dark, that's what melasma is. It's dark. So I'm trying to get rid of that darkness. Um, but this color, you'll notice, isn't lighter than my skin color. And I think that is a misconception when people are dealing with discoloration. So I'm going to put some on. You buy these Walgreens CVS, right? I'm just going to put it on and I'm going to do the same technique. I'm going to pat it and blot it on everywhere that I have the red um, color corrector. And the reason why I don't smear it on or do like a circle rotation 
is because melasma is so tricky to cover that once you start using other type of swiping or circle motions, it will just wipe right off and then you'll start seeing melasma again. I'm going to do it all over my nose because I have little, little specks there. I'm going to pull it all the way down just so that way we have the same color. It's okay. You can do that. Okay. I'm going to put it over here. I don't know if you can already tell a difference right there. And look at my upper lip. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Excuse me if I sound a little nasally today. I've been trying to get over a sinus infection. So there we go. Again, the blot technique is what I use for melasma. A lot of people say, oh, you know, you can use a brush and you could just brush it in. Not with melasma. It is so tricky. So there you have it. So I did all that. I'm still going to use my foundation after this. And obviously, because I still have eye makeup on, you're seeing a little bit of black there. I'm going to put this back. So I'm going to use my foundation now. And this is the foundation that I do get. It's also from Ulta. I'll have all of these listed. Here it is. It's also from Ulta. I'll have all of these listed down below for you. Now this one, I'm going to use a brush, but I am not going to, um, again, I'm going to use the same technique that I've been using where I'm going to kind of blot it in. So my brush. And I'm going to blot it in where my melasma is at. Now, if you get to the other areas, you can kind of just put it on like you normally would. But just where the melasma is at is where you have to use the blotting technique. Because that will ensure it's actually covering the melasma. And you're not just wiping it right off, right? I'm going to move this back. Same technique all the way through. Again, like on my forehead, I don't have melasma, so I would just... Choo, choo, choo. And I could do that down here because I don't have melasma there either. I'm going to blend it down. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to put this away. Put this down. I'm going to use... And I got this from Walgreens. Okay, this is what you want to use. Here's the thing. All I'm going to do, this is my setting powder. You don't want to put a lot as you age. Because the more setting powder you put on, the crepier your skin will look. So I'm barely dabbing it in. All I'm doing is just taking off the shine. And there we go. I really want to get in here so you could see this. This is where my melasma was. Here's where my melasma was here. I did have dark blotches and I had a line all the way across. I had some down here. Remember I had that imperfection right there? There it is. And also melasma here. You see how well it covers? If you were to only use a lighter foundation or lighter concealer, it is not going to look like that. And it's likely if you've been dealing with melasma for some time, you've tried that. Um, I think just about in anybody. Who, who deals with melasma for the first time actually deals with that. So here we go. We're moving on to the next steps. I use the same technique that you just saw for my other makeup that I'm about to put on. So I do contour because girl's got some, some round cheeks here. So we got to contour so that way we look. We look chiseled, right? I use this type of brush. Just a little angled brush. You get it? I'm going to go right above 
steal it. This is her, right above. Same thing here. That's where my cheek is uh, creased. I go right above. I'm going to blot it in. And the reason why I'm blotting this in is because I have melasma in this area. If you don't have melasma in that area, you could just brush it on just like you would before. Same thing here. So it's kind of a blot and swipe. And there we go. I also contour underneath. I don't have melasma here, so I'm just going to brush it on. Underneath there. All right. And we're going to move on to blush. Again, because I have melasma, I'm going to dab it on. So I've got some here. I'm going to press and press all the way up. Same, same technique. I'm going to press and press all the way up. And this way, I don't take off the makeup that we just built to cover our melasma. Some of you might be thinking after you've done that, sometimes when you press, you have a little bitty circle right there. So what I do is I will take my makeup, my uh, base brush, and I'm just going to dab it, dab it, dab it, dab it, dab it. Dab it, dab it, dab it, dab it, dab it, right there, just to soften it up just a little bit. So there we go. Contour. We have our blush. We've covered up our melasma, as you can tell. Um, I also do contour my nose. So let me show you how I contour my nose. I love KKW sticks for contour. Excuse my hair. Um, I'm running out. She hasn't resupplied, so this is what we're using. Uh, here we go. I'm going to do the same technique when I get this on. I'm going to blot to blend because typically you'll see people with brushes and they blend it out, right? Really harsh. Because I have melasma, I can't do that. I'm going to get my sponge and I'm going to sponge it. And I blot. I don't swoop it out. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take the bottom and blot all the way up. And that's just to take off the excess right from the middle because, right, we want to get a good contour line there going. Next, I'm going to use my contour brush. What I do for my middle stripe, I know it's kind of bizarre, but I do it. I use... It is Bye Bye Under Eye Illumination Cream. I just love Bye Bye products. They're so good. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit on a brush. If I could get some on there. There we go. And I'm going to go right up the middle. And then I'll flatten it out. I'm going to get my sponge once more. And I'm going to marry both of these colors. There we go. There we go. So, if you notice that it gets a little bit too dark, you can always go back, right? And blot off more. But that is how I contour my nose. Here's what I also do before I let you go because you're probably wondering, how do I illuminate my eye area when I'm dealing with melasma? Here we go. So I'm going to get my illumination, use the same brush that I did to, to run down my nose. I put it in the corner of my eye and brush it, very light brushes. I'm going to do the same thing here. 
I do not drop down to that B zone. One, because I have melasma. And that is going to make it very difficult for me because I'm going to blot all of my makeup off. The more, obviously, the more you mess with that area where you have melasma, the bigger chance you're going to lose some of of the coverage. So you don't want to do that. You have to be very careful whenever you're dealing with the area where you have melasma. You don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm going to blot here and I pull it down here and then I'm going to blot here and pull it up. I'm doing the same technique of just blotting again because of my melasma. And there you go. We'll do the same technique over here. So there you have it. I'm going to put a list of the products that I use on the bottom of this video so that way you can have it because I know it's so difficult to deal with melasma. I know it is, but there are options out there for you so that way you know how to cover it up without it standing out more. Tips on covering up that melasma. Get to it. We'll see you next time.